Roswell Flight Test Crew back here at NAB 2015. Be sure to subscribe so you can follow along with us here at the show. And I'm here with George Mosco. Did I say that right? You said it Mosco, yes. George Mosco uh, from skyhighmedia.net. And we are literally standing in the midst of the Monster X Gold X8 multi rotor. Tell me about this thing, and I love it, I love it, I love it. Well, th thanks a lot. Uh, it was a lot of hard work to get this where it is today. Um, yeah, this is our uh, heavy lift efficiency unit. It's quite a large beast, capable of flying a Red Epic and a Ronin for roughly 45 minutes while keeping in the 55 pound weight limit of the FAA. We spared no expense using some of the best materials. The carbon fiber is very, very high modulus for the length of the arms we're using. All aluminum parts fasten it together. We've also got safety wire holes through all of our screws for all of our mounts and motors so you can wire the, the screws in place like an airplane so they can't vibrate out under flight. Um, That's a nice feature. What does modulus mean when it comes to the carbon fiber? Oh, modulus is the factor of stiffness. So you have strength factors, which means you know you can twist it and pull it any way you want and it won't break. But then you have modulus, which is stiffness. So no matter how hard you push on it, it just doesn't bend. What sort of flight controller would you throw on it? Typically, you know, we recommend the uh, uh, the DJI A2. It's uh, it's been a very good, robust flight controller for us. But you can also use the 3DR Pixhawk. You could even throw, uh, you know, one of the um, the Nays 32s or anything you want, really. I mean, these frames are very strong, very aggressive, and very stiff. So they will handle what you throw at them. You know, it, it's just easy to dial in because there's not a whole lot of flex. Wow, wow. Now, uh, why don't you walk us through some of the details in the frame here. It looks like you've got mounting points for an undercarriage here. Yeah, um, well, what we have here is we have the mounting points for Seacraft landing gear retracts. So everything's built in and integrated into the frame. Um, we've got a battery tray down low here um, that if I actually, if I tilt this up to show it on the camera, sorry, um, you can see there's a battery space for two 22,006S uh, Pulse, Tattoo, or Gen Zace LiPos, or, you know, four smaller ones, depending on what you want to do. But for this, we're running 50 volts, so we need two 6S's there wired in a series to generate the 50 volts that we need. And so, um, where would you put the ESCs on this beast? Well, what we've, we've included holes in the top that mount down to the Hobbywing 150, 120 amp helicopter style ESCs, which we prefer. They have a lot of headroom in the power department, but also they have a lot of surface area and built-in heat sinks for keeping them nice and cool. So when we land, everything's nice and cool to the touch. We don't heat cycle the components too much, and we're just happier with that setup overall. It gives you the extra punch you need. Now, I, I, I love this thing. I want this thing but I'd need to go buy a big pickup truck to carry it around. Any thoughts to making one that we could maybe fold down? We just we wanted to get these out the door first because we had some people that were very interested in this kit. They wanted a very strong, very capable multi-rotor. And uh, you know, it brings us to the other one, which is our smaller version over here. And that's actually a shorter boom version of this one. And it's made for very aggressive flying with a Red and a, and a Ronin, you know. And maybe not as much flight time as this, but you can pretty much backflip this one with a camera and gimbal on it. Really? It's all that. Oh, wow. Wow. So now is this available now and what uh, what time frame do you uh, do you have you looking at for having it available to the general public and what's the price? Well, we're uh, we're expecting about a, a month to get the first few kits out the door after NAB. Um, we still have AUVSI to go to, so you know we're just you know we're just getting everything together for that. And so after AUVSI, we'll start shipping the first units out the door, and we're going to start retailing them for roughly in the three thousand dollar price range for the frames. Got it, got it. And so then all that all you get is the frame, presumably the mounting hardware. Yes. On top of that, then you've got to add your motors, your propellers, your ESCs. Oh, what size propellers are those, by the way? Uh, these are the 26-inch T-Motor Carbon two-piece props uh, mounted to U10 motors. Uh, very efficient setup. We went with the smallest uh, of the large T-Motor Carbons because they give the best response, while still maintaining some of the, the overall lift that the bigger ones give, while still giving it you know, a lot more responsiveness overall. You were saying that these things are really tough, really resist being crushed. Can we turn Tekkenstein loose on it and see if he can crush it? Absolutely. You're sure? He is, he's strong. He's a strong man. Bring it. Okay, Tekken's... I'll tell you, if, if he can break it, then I did it wrong. So, yeah, I mean, then I need to go back to the drawing board. So, please, show me I'm wrong. All right, Tekkenstein, let's see what you can do. Okay, so the gauntlet's been thrown down. Tekkenstein is a strong, strong man. Let's see what happens. Give us the play-by-play. -play. <laughs> well, I can feel it flexing just a tiny little bit, but, it, boy, it is strong, though. 
Yeah, maybe I should like stand on it, perhaps. <laughs> now you can see this is a this is a very rigid frame. That's amazing. I would not be at all concerned carrying something below this. <laughs> All right, well, you saw it here. Tekkenstein versus the Monster X frame. The Monster X frame wins. So from NAB 2015, this is the Roswell Flight Test Crew signing off.